Here I am loading up Crunchyroll looking at the title of this week's episode of Devil is a Part-Timer and it's something like the devil's lost at sea after losing his job and his home and as soon as the episode starts I hit pause and I look at that title again and I'm like what a way to get people into an episode. And the first shot of the episode is like a dramatic looking Mal and I was like, oh shit, like he just got fired or something. Turns out, complete bait, it's him just looking at baby pics and melting at the thought of them. But I love how they casually throw him out of his job, throw him out of his apartment, to then go work at a beach as they set up an ominous cliffhanger where apparently it's just the foghorn, but you know, something else is gonna happen there. They're probably gonna battle the crack and I'm not gonna be surprised if that happens. But I think the kind of casual shutting down the McRonalds because they need to repair. And unexpectedly, they also need to repair the apartment because of the giant angel battle that happened there. It's such a funny way that in any other show, I think having that title that is the, the official episode five title, would be like the biggest spoiler, but I think because Devil's a Part-Timer literally has a cast of angelic and demonic characters, that's like the least shocking thing all things considered because you know they'll bounce back from it just probably in a funny if not violent way. And watching this episode, which I had a blast with, I just love the idea of moving the characters from their typical setting into a more what should be vacation and Truth be told, all things considered, minus the very, very end of the episode, it kind of does look like a summer job, all things considered. The dude's making probably way better money than he ever did at his fast food job. Also, he potentially will get a bonus because they clean that shack up rather well. And yeah, maybe they'll have to fight like a monster or something, but all things considered, right? I mean, this should be a pretty fun change of scenery, especially given by just the fact that we saw the best sandcastle I think we'll see in this anime season. But... I love how even if this season of Devil's a Part-Timer doesn't come close to the same visual quality of the first, it's a very inconsistent season. The character models change from one scene to the other. There's a lot of outsourcing going on. But I think it's just because there was such a long gap between seasons that I'm just glad it's not a complete PowerPoint presentation where things are sliding on screen at the very least, even if the character models may not be that highly detailed or that consistent. I'm just happy that they're actually moving on like so many shows that are adapting like classic manga this season that basically hardly move at all. I really do hope if the rumors that this show is supposed to be getting more than just a second season, hopefully season three will have a bump in quality closer to that of the first season because I'm not like talking about the art style change, I'm talking more about it's just an inconsistent visually looking show with the odd time and background shot looking very highly detailed like the initial train scene there. But it's something that, you know, normally I'd be a lot more picky with because it's probably one of the more ugly looking shows this season when you compare a vast majority of anime airing. But it's something about the characters in this story that just make me say, you know what, we waited nearly a decade for this show. I'm just glad it wasn't a complete flop in the visual department, doesn't come as close as season one, don't get me wrong, but the story feels like we never left it at all, and it just makes me easy to accept it. So hopefully that, you know, whatever happened in the production with all the outsourcing, hopefully when we get the most likely rumored season three that's already floating around, maybe they'll touch it up a bit more. But I think watching the content that we've seen now over, I think we're at episode five here, it's pretty crazy to go from just, you know, literally battling heaven to literally getting an unexpected baby to then going on an unexpected vacation that potentially will have a giant catastrophe that he'll have to save. And I think given the fact that his apartment isn't the most, I think, you know, big castle that you'd want to protect, sure, the crew pretty much are melting at the fact that they have to leave Satan's castle. You know, there's not as much there to protect, so I think it's interesting switching them to a new location where they have a boss they want to work for, a boss they probably want to protect, while also just having a completely fresh change of pace for potentially maybe the remainder of this season. You have a lot of little moments like the buildup of Chi, I mean, seeing Chi's mom and just how she pretty much was like the ultimate wingman there. She's pretty much being a mom in the way of wanting to protect Chi, but saying like, he's a good man, as long as you're being respectful about everything, I'm gonna support you basically. I thought that was pretty sweet as you simultaneously have Emmy just being best mom and just kind of casually taking her totter out for just a little vacation. It was really cool to see all the just the little moments click here, and I'm having a blast with this season. Like, yeah, I wish the visual consistency was better, but it's hard not to just love the story and the character moments, and I love seeing just some very funny jokes and just potential 
catastrophes be formed in the background because now that you have this kid who views pretty much everyone in this group as like a sister, a brother, a mom, a dad, an uncle, whatever she views. Now you have Lucifer of all characters who does maybe one thing a season, considers himself good for the rest of the season, now has a kid saying don't bully him because they want him to do work and he's crying in a corner. This dude's gonna get off on doing so much and just it's gonna be hilarious if not a little infuriating to see what he gets out of because once in a blue moon he lifts his finger and saves the day sort of a thing but... It was great, I mean, it's just funny how they continue to have fun with the whole concept of where they came from and now where they are. The fact that you have our boy over here just buy a suitcase and how he's calling it basically like a business expense, and really, at the end of the day, they're just, he's buying a suitcase. It's not the biggest thing ever, but knowing how, like, stingy he is with his money, it's kind of hilarious to see how far he'll go in certain moments and just how he'll make an excuse like, oh, someday we'll have to travel overseas to get our magic back. It's just, I love to see the way these characters' minds work and how they get around what should be, you know, something they'd naturally push back against if another character brought it up, but because they did, they just have a grand old time saying, yeah, it's fine. One thing I did like is that based on the title of the episode, I thought he was actually getting fired for some reason, which would be weird because, I mean, like even his boss says in this episode, like, he's literally her right-hand man. So I was happy to see, like, he didn't lose his job because of something stupid, because he very much likes his McDonald's job, so I was hoping that it wasn't, like, a false customer complaint or something like that, and the reason that he gets evicted, right? Both of those big, shocking moments of casual joblessness and homelessness, both didn't happen because of him being punished like he's a shitty person, but more so, well, it's the landlady's job to repair, you kinda can't be there for fixing your entire damn wall, but also, we're gonna hook you up with a job, you know, someone that I'm related to or no. So it's nice that they're not, like, punishing Mal for literally changing into a better person and really is just functioning very well in human society, which is what I kind of was expecting, even though it didn't make sense to me when I initially read that title. But then seeing how they all connected it in such a funny way, I was like, the title wasn't lying. He absolutely goes on, the, you know, as a go to a bow and basically has to have no home or job, but it's nice to see how they still reward him even if they punish him so much. It feels like the punishments happen whether it's heaven attacking him and, you know, him having to get out of this or him having to relocate because of everything that's going on with repairs, right? This season of Devil's Part-Timer, it may not be the best it should have been in terms of the visual quality with the character designs changing from one scene to another and, you know, there's just so many freeze frames that you can look at and say this isn't even half the quality of season one. But in terms of the actual story, the voice actors, the characters, it's exactly what I wanted, so it's easy for me to overlook a lot of those shortcomings, even though I am crossing my fingers that when we do get that eventual Season 3, it will have a bump up in the production value, but of course only time will tell. Let me know your thoughts though down below. What did you think of this episode? What do you hope to see with the cliffhanger of this episode? Do let me know. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.